back. Mike Cernovich, DangerInPlay.com, Gorilla Mindset. We're about to whiteboard a new project. I got my uh, deplorable coordinator, co host, Jeff Giese on the phone. How are you doing, Jeff? Hey, Mike. How's it going? Good, good. So, those of you at home, I have Jeff on Bluetooth. This is what you call a, I don't know what's the politically correct term, correct term for what I'm doing. I have Jeff on Bluetooth. You're on Periscope, and I'm about to do some whiteboarding. So what are we going to talk about today, Jeff? Well, we're going to talk about MAGA Meetup. Okay. And how to set this in motion. And um, I guess just for your listeners, just this context, you know, MAGA 3X was a pop-up grassroots vehicle that we, all, we that was your brainchild, Mike, during the election. We all collaborated on that together. Um, and then the Deplora Ball was kind of the, the final exclamation mark on everything with, with MAGA 3X. And I think what we realized is how much, it, at the end of the day, it's really just about community. And people seem to love events. People love getting together. And there's just a hunger for more events and more uh, community. And that's kind of where MAGA Meetup comes in. OK, great. So I'm going to write, I'm going to show people so for those of you watching on the phone, you can just learn how you want to kind of think about things. So MAGA Meetups was ultimately about community was the number one goal. So what you do when you want to mind map stuff is you want to say, that is how you remember. That is the goal, and that is what matters more than anything. Because then if you, if you lose track, you just return, return to basics. So we'll say community. Under community, we'll have events, right? Events. Is that right, Jeff? Yes. All right, so we got events. So what, what are we thinking about next for MAGA meetups and what happened with MAGA 3X? It sounds like MAGA 3X is actually over. Is that right? Well, and so I think, I think it's a new chapter for MAGA 3X, and I think the opportunity is to basically end it as we've known it and roll it into MAGA meetups and just kind of focus on there just because, you know, I have, we all have other stuff going on in our, our lives and our careers and the election inauguration are over. It's time for a new chapter and kind of a new way uh, to support Trump and setting ourselves up for success. And so I think, you know, for your listeners, whenever you start a new project, you know, you want to learn from your last project, what went well, what mistakes did you make and what, what can you learn from it? And then you also want to think about how can we set ourselves up for success in this new project, given our resources, our time, and, and so on and so forth. Okay. So what are we thinking about then? So we've got MAGA meetups, we have community events. I guess would we had those people were doing those um, like flash rallies, right? So that would be like another right. So, flash rally. Right. So rallies. Uh, meetups in cities where people can just sort of meet up, okay. um, you know, occasional rallies um, with periscoping and so forth in different places, and just kind of the general cheerleading and community organizing. <laughs> I always cringe when I say that word. Involved in, uh, you know, supporting Trump and the Trump movement and keeping that going. Gotcha. So hold on, I'm going to read. People want events bigger, and. What would we do then? So then how would we do this? What would this look like operationally? Well, MAGA 3 well, I think, So I think the challenge, so yeah, so some of the, there are four or five issues. So I think, I think there are different levels of scale by which we could do this, right? In an ideal world, you know, you or I would be doing this full time and we would make it, you know, we would raise, a, you know, millions of dollars and really blow this shit out, right? Um, in an ideal world, I don't know that that's, I mean, that's something that you or I want to do. And I think we kind of like this scrappy, basically no resources approach that we've taken so far. So given that, you know, so I think there's a strategic decision there around whether we want to go really big. And so this is a good lesson for your listeners. Like, you know, if you, what scale do you want to do it? If we want to, want to go the millions and millions, you know, really blow this thing out, that would require raising a ton of money, having a formal leadership structure and, and, and one set of action. And then if we wanted to keep this kind of scrappy and organic and, and not utilize as many resources, then that's a different path. And 
it's my understanding that's the path that, that we both want to take. Is that, is that right from your standpoint? Yeah, exactly. I'm not trying to be the or I'm not trying to be CEO of a 501c3. So that would be kind of a challenge. Is that um, who's going to do it, right? Who, who, who's going to yeah. be responsible for this? Because I'm not trying to say, okay, I'm done being an author, journalist. I want to go run, you know, a heritage type foundation. I don't want to do that, and you don't want to do that either, correct? Exactly. And so I think we, yeah, so when we've talked about this so far, it's been pretty much like, kind of like Magic 3 X, more of the all volunteer, more organic, um, you know, pretty, you know, some budget, but pretty low budget. And so, uh, you know, four of the issues for us to talk about with this are one, um, what structure to put it in. So do we want to put it, I think that's one lesson we learned from Magic 3 X right. is, you know, when you start a new project it's great to have a pop-up vehicle like i think that really works um but i also think it, you need to have it in some legal structure or you can run into some issues and i think we we learned that as well so with maga meetups we can decide whether it's an llc maga meetups llc which is the quickest and cheapest to create or whether we want to put it in a 501c3 um which might take a lot, little bit longer to create but would give people a uh, you know, people in our community could contribute to it, have that be tax deductible. So that's one question mark on your whiteboard to draw, Okay. you know, corporate structure, is it LLC or is it a nonprofit 501c3 slash 501c4? Gotcha. So LLC or 501. Yeah, so that, and, and, go ahead. Yeah, and my bias would be, I mean, if it's, it's a tricky call depending on the vision, my bias would be to just put it in an LLC because that's, that's easier, but maybe your maybe your viewers have a point of view in terms of is it something they want to contribute to tax deductible or you know support with the bill fund me or does that not matter? Because if that doesn't matter, then the LLC is a no brainer. Yeah. So for those of you at home, if you've ever if you've ever started a business, you know that the easiest thing to do is you just create an LLC or a holding company. And then you run your revenue through the LLC. The revenue isn't taxed until it's called a pawn distribution. So if you run an LLC, you can't be sued for whatever happens. The entity is what gets sued. And your, the tax implications are only if you draw from or distribute from the profits, then you're taxed whatever the distribution is. And the issue for those of you at home is... Would you want a charity type nonprofit, a 501c3, where contributions are tax deductible, or do you just not really care about that? So that is kind of the question for those of you at home, because this, again, is all grassroots. Jeff and I are ultimately trying to do something, and I don't want to say walk away because I'll still support it, but I'm not trying to create a 501c3, become the CEO, and then get a salary. I don't want anything to do with that at all, right? But we do need some kind of structure because you do have to pay people, you do have to pay for salaries, you do have to buy equipment, things like that. So that is something for the people to kind of think about. So we got MAGA meetups. So for those of you at home, we got MAGA meetups. Do we want an LLC or do we want a nonprofit? MAGA meetups is about community, which means we have events. Those flash mobs are great, and then we have, obviously, meetups. So I kind of view these as three separate things, and I'll tell you I'll tell you why. So I would say under events, we would put, you know, deplorable bull moose, you know, where you actually, like, we have to sign contracts, we have to put up money, we have to have a budget. You, you can't just say, hey, come on over, and if people show up, great, if nobody does not, like these... And the events actually, they cost money, even though for those wondering at home, we don't make a profit. We don't make a profit off of them. So that would be events. Does that make sense, Jeff? Absolutely. I mean, these events, they're, they're a pain in the ass to do. They're so important for the community, and people seem to really like them. So that's the, yeah, that's the event. So I, I, I agree that, that may, that's its own category of, of thing with a MAGA meetup. And, and then you mentioned flash mobs and, and meetups, right, is the other two? Yeah, exactly. That's why I, I think it's helpful to, hold on here, I did it. 
I do have a power cord for dying batteries here. Yeah, those, I think it's, it's helpful to treat them as separate categories because the flash mobs, you just need somebody to organize them. You don't need people signing contracts. It's just social media, all organic. And I think the same thing is true with the meetups. The meetups or the meetups themselves. And the, the one other kind of product, quote unquote, related to, so <coughs> if we think of those as products of Maga Meetups, there's events, there's flash mobs and meetups, which are really done at the local level. And then there's also just kind of social media cheerleading, which, you know, I think can really just be based on, on promoting different events, but building out that social media presence and cheerleading Trump and, and promoting the different uh, events happening locally. So. Social media would be the fourth line of activity. Gotcha. So we would put that. Social media would be, I guess, in a way, social media is all of these three things. Because without social media, none of this is going to happen. And of course, that is why that is why they want to kick us off social media. Because well, yeah, because exactly. that's so much so much power in social media. Yeah, so if, somebody, if we have somebody who's a volunteer or, you know, freelance who's willing to be the project manager for this, they can manage the social media and then also help us, you know, help find the regional, you know, leaders at different local levels and support the people who want to do flash mobs and meet, up, meet up in their own city. So, there, so we would need some kind of project manager or regional coordinator, somebody who can say, all right, if you want to have a MAGA meetup in Arlington, Virginia, tell me about it, and then I'll make sure the information gets pushed out via social media. We would want some kind of coordinator, right? It, exactly, yeah. So we want somebody who's managing the social media, um, you know, somebody who, who wants to manage the social media. And it'd be ideal if that person could also have the relationship with different volunteers in different cities who wanted to organize their own Trump event, you know, MAGA meetup locally. Um, so that, I think, is, is an important role, and that is one that I think we should really consider, you know, to the extent that we have budget, paying, paying somebody for. And then I think everything else at a regional level is just all volunteer basis. And the more that we can make this a volunteer movement, the better. Um, at the same time, I think we do want to have some organization and some structure to really, you know, a lot of people are like, Jeff, you know, Mike, what can I do to help? I want to help. People People like structure and direction. So the more we can kind of give them a little bit of that structure and support, uh, the, the more uh, I think people will be willing to volunteer and step up to the plate. Gotcha. So we would need maybe a, so then what we would think about is there would be a big structure, like some kind of LLC, and then the, either LLC or nonprofit, and then contributions would flow to that LLC or that holding corporation, and then that would go to pay for like regional coordinators, pay artists, pay for graphics design work, that kind of stuff. Exactly, yeah, I don't I don't know that we'll need to pay for, yeah, exactly. So, Maga Meetup LLC, we're not trying to make a profit on that. Um, we're just trying, you know, so it's in a business structure, it's just an entity. We have money goes through there, so we'll we'll capitalize it initially with several thousand dollars, you know, between you and me, and then over time raise money, and then that those funds could be used to, you know, pay like legal fees to get it set up, pay like very minor design stuff, maybe pay somebody to be the main project manager for this and manage the social media and all that, and then I think everything else is basically volunteer. I mean. Maybe there's somebody in a city, you know, in a major metro area who just wants to, like, be, like, you know, a hardcore Magneto community organizer, and we can consider, like, paying that. But I think the more, the more volunteer-based it is, the better. Yeah, because I, I definitely, you know, things get weird whenever money's involved. And for something like this, I want as little money involved as possible because... Then that just money makes money changes things. So I want not a lot of money involved in it, mostly volunteers. Because you and I volunteer. The way I look at it is, I don't get paid doing this stuff. Neither do you. Yeah, yeah exactly. I so I think I think it should be. We should assume it's all volunteer. 
but there might be a little slack. Like, you know, I think if somebody's project managing this and they're spending 20 hours a week, right? You, you know, there, there might be it, there might be well, that that relationship might be one where we want we're just to have this set up for success. We need somebody who who treats it a little bit like you know job. like a well, job. Somebody we can <laughs> and yell then everything at. Else is volunteer. Yeah, I mean, you, you need somebody that you can say, why isn't something getting done? And if everybody's volunteering, you can't very well say that. Yeah, so if anybody out there wants to be the project manager for Magamita and volunteer 20 hours per week, um, that would be amazing. Please, you know, notify Mike. And if somebody wanted to do that, you know, on a freelance basis, I think that that's going to be a position we'll probably need for this, Mike. Yeah, exactly. Um, yep. It's, and then that person can find the local, you know, put out notice, and we'll get volunteers in different communities, and, and it'll happen organically as well. You know, that person, this person can manage all that. Great. By the way, I gotta go get the door real quick. Keep talking. Okay. Um, so I'm not looking at the computer, guys, but I'm just gonna share. Um, so I have no idea what feedback you're getting. Uh, you're giving me. Um, but some of if you're if you're making fun of my gay voice, probably because I'm gay. Um, no, I'm just joking. Um, anyway, no, actually, I'm not joking. But uh, so some of the other categories to discuss, we talked about structure, um, brand identity. So that's just like getting the icons and header images for Twitter and Facebook. Because what we're probably going to do is just transition uh, MAGA 3x into. Um, in the MAGA meetups on Twitter and then into a Facebook page. So we need to get that stuff designed. And so um, I think we already have a designer starting on that. I mentioned team and then I mentioned resources. Um, what else should we be thinking about, guys? So why don't you type in that as we wait for Mike to come back. And we're back. All right, so I'm reading. I'll take your comments and questions right now. I'll read them on my Periscope right now. <clears throat> See what people have to say. But yeah, for those of you following along at home, MAGA3 security. So a lot of people mention security. So that is a concern. It's come up many times. So we'll just write concerns. Let's do, we'll do the, um, I mean, if you want to, we, do, you want, do you want to teach them how to do a SWOT analysis or... Is that, you know, if pe maybe a lot of people don't know how to kind of do this? Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do it. <clears throat> okay, so how many of you at home watching, have you ever done a, a SWOT analysis, SWOT? So if you've done a SWOT analysis, let us know. But I think maybe a lot of you haven't, so you can kind of see us do it. I might have to just clear the whiteboard off now. So yeah, so yeah I'm going to go ahead and just... Somebody screen cap the whiteboard, and then I'm going to wipe it off. Wipe off part of it. All right. All right, so yeah, this would be cool because a lot of people maybe have never done anything thing like this. And so they've never maybe started a business or even kind of a company. So they don't realize that everything is everything is connected. So we'll say S W O T. I should have used blue colors. Should have used a different color for it. But um, all right. So what what's the SWOT analysis, Jeff? The SWOT analysis is it's just a way to take a snapshot of any situation where you're analyzing the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats. So Mike on his whiteboard has probably driven, uh, drawn uh, a matrix with four boxes. And so there's one for strengths, one for weaknesses, one for threats, and one for opportunities. Yeah, so I'm, I'm using mind maps and the circle kind of mind mapping method. But yeah, same, same thing. A lot of people would use a grid. So a, t a traditional SWOT analysis would be a grid like this. But I like the I like the more nonlinear mind mapping method. That's just a different, you know. There's no right way for those of us at home. So strength. What's our strengths? <clears throat> Social, right? We got, you know, we got platforms. 
What else is another strength? So for those of you following at home, the SWOT analysis, is a, SWOT is an acronym. SW, SWOT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and challenges. We're now talking about MAGA meetups, which is the latest iteration of MAGA 3X. It's a new MAGA 3X. It is a um, pivot, called the brand pivot, as you would say. So what strengths do we have? Then you go, what weaknesses do we have? What opportunities do we have? And then what threats are we facing? So for example, a big threat would be, you know, the anti-fa terrorism, right? So a big, a big threat would be, would be anti-fa kind of terrorism. <clears throat> and that's what SWAT is. So what would be, what would say strengths, right? And you can, and for those of you at home, there's no right or wrong answer here. This is just a brainstorming session. That is literally all this is. A brainstorming session. So go well, ahead. And secretly, in addition to being a brainstorming session, I didn't, it just occurred to me right, it's, uh, right now, it's actually a persuasion session as well. Because, you know, one of the things Mike talked a lot about is persuasion and that book, Persuading. And so by sharing with you guys our brainstorming session, it's also a way to get you involved and get your buy-in and thoughts and feedback on a new project at the same time. So we're both brainstorming and, and, and persuading you on Magadita right now. Right, exactly. Buy-in. That dif The difference between, you know, the way we're doing it right now and the fake news media is buy-in. The people, What people want to do is they go, this is the way the world is. You have to listen to us. That's the way Paul Ryan thinks, Mitt Romney, Evan McMuffin, the fake news media at CNN. This is the way that they think. But that is why they don't have a movement. That is why Hillary Clinton lost. They don't get buy-in from the people that they want to lead. You can't lead without followers. And that's why you have to have buy-in from people. And if people don't agree with what you're about to do, then you need to hear from that. People need to tell you. So that's all we're doing right now is, hey, right now we want to do a project. Without you, this project doesn't exist. Therefore, it doesn't make any sense to not talk to you, to talk to you about it. So we would say strengths, we would have, you know, we, we won. That's a good strength. We have platforms, we have personalities, we have very strong, you know, persons. Um, somebody mentioned hot chicks, which, you know, MAGA girls are, you know, better better looking, you know, than average bear. True. So, you know, it's just... It's true, it's true. It's just reality. Um, we have the brain power. Our people are smarter than the other team, even though the media we, would like to tell otherwise. We have a proven track record in this movement. Right. That's a strength. Yep. Mike, I think your your reach into the community and your you know, your great doing your periscopes and YouTube and stuff, that's a strength. Um, and we you know, and there's some other many other influencers in our community too. Right. Who can just on the you know, can get the word out on something so quickly. Yeah. I, social media platform strength in general. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. that what I would say. We we have we have strong Platforms, and then for those of you at home, a threat would be banning, right? So that's where you always the, the way people go wrong in life is they don't think about how would you take me out. I always think about it if I were opposed to Mike Cernovich, I run war game scenarios against myself. So a threat, anti father terrorist, and then the threat is what you call platform risk, which we'll just call that P risk. Platform risk means Twitter could say, oh, You're off Periscope, you're off. You're off Twitter, and then now you lose that. So that's a threat. What is a... So before we move on, let's finish with the strengths. We got platforms. We have strong personalities. We have the hot people. We have the smart people. We have a track record of success. What, what else? What's another strength, you think? Enthusiasm. Yeah, people are saying energy. You know, energy, enthusiasm. Uh, yeah, high energy. Um, what else? Um, what I mean, are some other ideas for, that people are saying? So yeah, people are saying a lot of various skill sets. So we, yeah, we have diverse skills, a lot of different talent. So we'll just call that talent. So we have talent. I just think the whole, yeah, the passion meter is huge too. I mean, right, enthusiasm, yeah, energy. Really, right. Yeah, enthusiasm, you got that, yeah. Yeah, E&E. &E. We have a better uh, message. I think message is true. We, we also have a skill around like trolling and the Right. 
of like people in the community are really, not myself necessarily, but others are good at like art and banners and <laughs> rallies with periscoping and kind of this uh, ground ground up approach. Yeah, memes. We'll call that memes. We have we have the memes. Yeah, memes. Perfect. What else we got going on? We got, yeah, banter, a lot of skill. All right, so there, um, sh I mean, strength is you and I tend to PM stuff, and, um, you know, you and I know how to sell. So sales is a very, very strong um, skill. The deplorable sold yeah, out, I, Bull Moose sold out, I, everything I, we do sells out. Yeah, I, mean, I think our, collab our collaboration is a strength. I mean, it kind of plays off pretty well in terms of setting this thing in motion so that's the strength um and there's also an internal threat there too around you know do we make sure it so for your listeners when you're talking about threats there are external threats in the marketplace like mike was talking about the anti or anti platform there are also internal threats like what if we don't have enough resources or what if we set this in motion but don't really have anybody leading it nobody has the time to actually get it done right yeah um, and then what there's, if there's drama yeah. drama is a threat too right we've, we've experienced that <laughs> yeah I, I actually put it's called g and d gossip and drama if you ever want to kill an organization kill your vision kill your dreams get a lot of gossip and a lot of drama in your organization and then it is all over so that's definitely a threat I think another threat is, you know, what if the enthusiasm for Trump, like what if Trump doesn't execute, what if he right. cuts as effectively, or what if, yeah, what if he cuts and then we, people start to lose enthusiasm for Trump, so I think there's a threat there. Yep, definitely, we, we always have that. Um, egos could be, you know, egos are always on a, a, a threat to any kind of organization. Luckily, you and I are, luckily for us in this kind of organization is neither Jeff nor I define our identity based on this. This is something that we did because it needed to be done to save America. We didn't start it, though. Like, Jeff has been very successful and businesses, built several. I'm not going to go, you know, talk about too much, but he's built several platforms with enterprise value, been there, done that. Same thing. I've had incredible success in my life. So the, the ego thing has never actually been a threat. The bigger threat, egos, is um, I would say I'm lazy and Jeff is uncommitted. So if we're doing, you know. <laughs> totally. That's so, accurate. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so I'm like, lazy, I'm, Jeff I'm, is uncommitted. I'm super, I get an A in everything that I do. So like when, I'm commit, when I commit, I do it well. Like I get it done. I'm just reluctant to commit for too long of a term. So that, that's pretty accurate. That's funny. <laughs> right. Um, I think another threat is if we don't give people enough structure and direction, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like, how do we, how do we create the, an organizational structure that isn't too controlled, but also gives the right amount of direction? So that's kind of a, a threat and a challenge. Maybe it's a, it's a challenge, but yeah, that's, not having the right structure, having it either too loose or too, you know, or too rigid, it could is a threat. Yeah, right. Like, what if you get somebody who who volunteers to be to help lead a local uh, mag meetup group and they just don't do anything? Yeah. <coughs> um, another threat is uh, creepy guys. You know, let's be honest. Maybe you know. In any kind of meetup organization, there could be creepy people who show up who aren't about MAGA meetups, and they just want to, you know, creep on women, which isn't... We understand in any organization or any social gathering, human beings do have sex, but this isn't an online dating match.com kind of thing where people are trying to meet other people. It's primarily about friends. Another threat would be bird dogging and uh, saboteurs. So saboteurs, oh, yeah, good one. Yeah, saboteurs, well, bird doggers. I think people can use it a little bit to, you know, to, you know, to uh, for matchmaking, but you know, that's just me. Well, <laughs> I, I, like I said, I'm realistic about it, but it, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't want people going in there, you know, trying to treat it like a hookup club because that will lead to gossip and drama. 
right? So I'm realistic about human beings are human beings and things happen fine. I'm not anybody's morality police. But we, you know, we gotta, we got, I don't want guys going, I don't want, you know, you always got to think of what story can people tell about your events. And I don't want pe the story about this to be, you know, people are ruining it. And here's, a, and that brings up another threat, Mike, which is, you know, how do we, another threat is, is, you know, what if somebody in the name of Maganita does, uh, you know, expresses political points of view that we don't agree with, or that they're either too far right or too far left or whatever, but for whatever reason, we, it doesn't fit what we're, what we're, what we're trying to be about, or let's put it differently, it, it reflects poorly on Trump. Right, exactly. So That's a threat. Yeah, so I call those people saboteurs, you know, the Nazi saluters, the people who they just want to, to sabotage things. And I think the way we deal with that threat is that is why for something like this, there has to be some kind of structure. Somebody who can say, hey, this isn't what it's about. This isn't what the thing is. But then that would be because of that threat, you need some kind of mission statement. So in terms of things that you need, you know, you got to have you got to have a vision and you got to have a mission statement. And then yeah, just some basic shared. Sure. Yeah, it doesn't need to be over thought, but just some basic shared principles, like, you know, like all Trump supporters are welcome. You know what I mean? Like, just some basic guidelines or principles, that's all. Yeah, and that goes to another strength, is that though we are media savvy, so we know how the media wants to sabotage us and what they would do, which is another way that we can neutralize a lot of these threats. Are We know, we kind of know the media game and how the media game is played. We know better than most. Totally. Totally. All right, so we have strengths and we have threats. What would be, um, and I guess weakness, What would so weakness would be probably lazy and uncommitted would be our weakness rather than a threat. So I guess that, that is kind of a threat, but I would say that's more of a, more of a weakness. Yeah, I would say certain limited resources, lazy. limited resources, lazy, you know, uncommitted, like, you know, uh, weaknesses, um, no full-time ownership. Yep. No full-time ownership, um, yeah, uh, lack of structure. Execution. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we need Jeff's buy-in. So for strength, I would put operations, Jeff operations would be a strength. And by the way, people, for those of you at home, for those of you who are at home, you can see how you're filling things out. That's why you brainstorm this stuff for a, a life mission, a vision for anything that you want to do. Because as you think of strengths and weaknesses and threats, you realize how connected they are. So a strength that I hadn't mentioned earlier was Jeff is talented operationally, so that's his strength. That doesn't mean he wants to run the operations. He doesn't, but that is an asset. You just want to think, what assets do we have? Another strength is that, um, you know, we have a big social network. You know, Sheriff Clark did come to the Deplore Ball, which was, you know, really cool and great of him. And other people, other people came to the Deplore Ball who are, you know, well-known and everything until the media harassed them. So what and so what would be an opportunity then? Um, I would say we have there's nothing. I'll just call it zero to one. I would say the biggest opportunity we have is there's nothing like this right now, which is always an incredible opportunity to be the first person to execute on an idea. Absolutely. Um, another opportunity is well, let's see. Um, I think one thing that's great about the organic approach is that this can, we don't have to go city by city, mm. right? So an opportunity is to open source this a little bit and get people organically doing MAGA meetups. Like I noticed on meetup.com, there already is like an Austin MAGA meetups group. So I think that's a real opportunity is on a certain level to get this going more organically in a lot of cities at once rather than being totally top down and trying to do one at a time. Yes, and I'd also wrote down while you were talking, another opportunity somebody has said on the Periscope is you can red pill normies, which is 
<coughs> which is true. We have all these meetups. You are showing people what the Trump movement is really about, which is about good people getting together, brainstorming about making America great again. That kind of imaging and messaging will awaken a lot of normal people who believe the fake news and believe the fake news lies. Uh, another opportunity is it could lead to a 2018 get out the vote drive. And it could also, I love that one. yeah, and it could also lead to our running our slate of candidates who maybe they are at a meetup and they talk and then somebody says, I want to run for office, that we could also have our own, own candidates. A good example of that is uh, the fake website CNN got really angry that I exposed them as frauds. So they found out that Corey Stewart, who's running for governor of Virginia, I had interviewed him as part of Cernovich Media, and now they're trying to say, how dare you know, any candidate run for Cernovich Media? But that goes to show how many people are within our kind of orbit. So I believe that we will have somebody run for Congress who attends a MAGA meetup. I make that a prediction as a prediction right now that there will be a candidate for Congress, and indeed almost certainly will be elected, who has its origin in a MAGA meetup. Another opportunity is a database or app, you know, getting, right. because there really is no, um, there's no, there's very little people or policy ecosystem right. around Trumpism. So as these groups are forming, there's an opportunity to build out, back out of that, like a big database of people that would really help with the 2018 efforts that you're talking about. So that's an opportunity. Right. Um, that is an opportunity. Great point. What would be, for those of you at home, what is the big opportunity that you see at MAGA meetups? People are saying MAGA app, exactly. MAGA apps, MAGA parties, MAGA club events. Yeah, people really like the MAGA app kind of idea. So we'll just write that as this online item. MAGA yeah, and, and app. I love that. And just to tease that a little bit, Mike, you know, we talked about with our connection, you know, it's a long shot, but conceivably, we could get Trump himself to tweet out the MAGA app. Could you imagine? Yeah, exactly. And that would just, that would be that would be a huge coup to get people using an app. Anyway, there's some opportunity there. Gotcha. Uh, another opportunity could be uh, bigger events. I think is another opportunity. Bigger events. Definitely. Because as more people show up. That gives us, so for those of you at home who don't know, just to be you know, fully transparent for those of you at home who don't know, Jeff and I have talked about putting on a big event, but a big event requires he and I to, to sign a contract for $100,000 or $200,000. So a lot of people are like, Mike, throw another deplorable, throw another big event, throw another this, and I'm thinking, that's all well and good, but when you're the person signing a contract for maybe $200,000 to put on an event, that is a lot of pressure and it's a big risk and because we're not trying to get, you know, whatever. But that is what, you, to have a big event would be if you have these meetups, they really take off, then that shows people and it shows Jeff and I, hey, put on the big event because people want to, to go to these things. So I think another opportunity would be sort of, that would be in a way market research for a big event. Definitely, and, and along those lines, since I tend to think about, you know, the opera, you know, getting and executing stuff, uh, you know, big events are a pain. And I'm not a party planner or event planner, and I really respect people who are. Um, but one opportunity with the amount, with resources, we could actually hire an event planner, you know, on a one-off basis to do some of these big events. Right. So we're, we're a little bit away from that, but um, but that could, that could happen. I mean, in some of the events, you know, speaking of big event opportunities that we've talked about, one is a cruise, a MAGA cruise. Right. <laughs> what do you guys think um, about a MAGA cruise? I'm, I'm talking I thought about it was cheesy, but right. when I've talked to people about it, they, they seem to like it. So that's right. one idea. Right. And then the second idea is like a destination event in Vegas. Like we're like we maybe thinking, uh, calling it TPAP, like an alternative like for the social media brigade. And then the right. third event, and this one, similarly, I'm really passionate about, is doing Davos for nationalists. Uh -huh. Basically, the, like, the, the, the anti-Davos. So imagine an event 
in Las Vegas or Scottsdale or wherever where it was an international crowd and we got the Le Pens, we got, you know, people from all around the world who, who share the same Trumpist orientation uh, together. That's, that's a little bit high in the sky, but I, I love that idea. I'm, I'm curious what your listeners think. Yeah, so what are those, so those of you at home, what do you think about a, it would be better, it would be, first of all, do you guys know what Davos is? Davos is kind of a globalist conspiracy where they all meet and decide how they're going to destroy America and have open borders and basically ruin the world. Well, what if we had a Davos for nationalists where instead of having people talk about how they destroy the world, we could talk about how to build up nations to make nations strong, to make nations great. And we would have nationalist thinkers, philosophers, social media training. I could do a social media training. So uh, the feedback is overwhelmingly positive. They definitely like that. So what, what would you guys like? A, a summit. People are calling it a summit, which is yeah, another and, way and putting a, it. And a little bit of South by Southwest, like, unconference, like, where people could, right. where the community, you know, like, it's like South by Southwest meets Davos, where a lot of the stuff was community-driven and how-to, and it, and it was a more global audience. So... Personally, I'm really passionate about that idea, and it's good to hear that others seem to like that, too. Yeah, people, you know, and it's interesting, and that's why it's so great to have these conversations. Everybody's calling it a summit. That is what they like, a MAGA summit, some kind of summit. So that's interesting with what the, what the people are actually calling it. So that's what comes to mind. A Davos for Nationalists is a summit. Now, what do you guys think about where would you want to have it? Uh, Vegas or maybe Scottsdale, Phoenix, Arizona type of area, maybe somewhere else. Where would you want to attend a summit? What kind of, what location, what city would you want to have it in? Some people are saying Trump Tower, Vegas. That's funny. I didn't even think about that. So yeah, that's that's funny. A Vegas, people are really, they really like the idea of a Vegas summit. Palm Springs, other people are mentioning... <laughs> But Vegas is... Oh, like, I like kind of... I mean, I love Vegas, but I also like a little bit new agey locations like Coachella or Sedona or, you know, Park City or even Utah. Like, a place like that could be cool, too. But yeah. anyway. Boise, Idaho. No, I, I'm, I'm with you there. I definitely... I feel, I feel you in that regard. I'm trying to figure out this little clip thing. So, yeah, people really like Vegas... Trump, yeah, so, but again, we don't have, you know, for, that's the great thing, guys, about brainstorming is we don't have to decide everything today, but what we want to do is we want to know if it's a viable idea, because to do a summit would probably, would probably be about $250,000, does that sound right, once you factor in conference spaces and venue and speakers and costs and everything? Yeah, yeah, and the other thing to think about is the market, I mean, how much we charge, because... If we're going with people who are, are working with government, you know, spending if it spends if it costs a couple thousand dollars to go high end, that's going to be a very different audience, and I, I don't necessarily think that's what we want. Versus if we can keep the price point more reasonable, where and accessible, where people even if they're not doing it for work, you can go and it's really kind of like South by Southwest is the way I'm thinking of it. Right. Um. So that those things are considerations. So. Why don't we bracket the MAGA Summit as its own thing? But there's definitely an right. opportunity there for sure. Yes, yeah, so I'll just put that. I'll put that in its own little square. And then we would do, so for those of you at home, so if you want to kind of follow the method behind the madness, we talked about MAGA meetups. We talked about strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. As you're brainstorming your SWOT analysis, you can come up with a whole new idea. Now, this would be its own SWOT analysis, right? What we would do right here is we would go, okay, we're talking about a South by Southwest style MAGA meetup. Well, now we would flip it over in a whole new page, and then we would want to talk about the specific SWOT analysis as to, as to that event. So I, th I think this has been pretty productive, Jeff. Do you have anything else you want to add? I think it's been great. Yeah, I think we really got the juices flowing, and um, I haven't been able to follow the feedback, so I'm just curious what what your listeners think i'm sure they have great great input and ideas no they they definitely no no the people people liked it a lot um 72,000 or 7200 people have watched already 
you know, many thousands more will. Yeah, they, um, the people are, a lot of people like Vegas, um, Vegas or Arizona. What I like about Vegas and Arizona are that they're both much more lower cost and they and they already have the infrastructure needed. What I like about Phoenix and Scottsdale are that those are areas that were pro-Trump. So the local police would be more likely to, to keep things under control. I think hotel venues would be more uh, willing to work with us. De definitely Vegas and Scottsdale would be turnkey in terms of their setup for doing summits like this. So those make sense. And then, as I mentioned to you, there's one guy I talked to who's like, dude, Jeff, we should do an event at Mar-a-Lago. Right. <laughs> So Mar-a-Lago might be the one exception to look at, but right. I think they, they uh, jacked up their costs and Trump yeah. got elected, but that's fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so what is your Twitter handle? Can people um, get a hold of you on Twitter? Is that all right with you, or do you want to keep that private, or what's the deal? Yeah, no, I'm happy to share. So my Twitter handle, I keep more, a little less, you know, political, but you're welcome to follow me. I'm at jeffgc.com. That's J E F F G I E S E A. Again, Jeff G I E S E A. You can follow me there. Right now, I'm doing a lot of work in the national security arena. And I'm curious about like information warfare and medic warfare. And I'm also got to do some stuff like my time, personal development, leadership, and entrepreneurship. So um, I'm all over the map, but right now, you'll see more national security stuff. Um, at the moment. Okay, great, Jeff. That was a lot of fun. Thanks so much. Wait a second, Mike. In yes. order to finish the brainstorming section, this is a good lesson for your listeners. You always want to have next steps. Okay. So I'm going to nail you down on that for just a minute. All right, what is the next? See, Jeff knows. Jeff knows that I'm just going to go do something else completely unrelated to what we just talked about. So the next step for this would be to... Rebrand the, the I, if what I would do right now is I would rebrand the social media accounts for MAGA meetups and I would put out a preliminary announcement. Look for MAGA meetups coming soon. That way people know to expect it and they and then they, then they like the idea. Okay, so we have the execute rebrand and that involves uh, uh, designing the new stuff for MAGA meetups. Right. That involves announcing it. Right. Making announcements, and that involves just like the basic, you know, logistics of social media setup. That's pretty easy. Then we have another next step of figuring out the legal structure. And so, based on the feedback, maybe we want to sleep on it, but either we do a 501c3 type vehicle or an LLC. I'm inclined to just say do an LLC. So uh, talk to a lawyer. Um, or get a referral to a lawyer to create LLC or nonprofit. Yeah, exactly. I, I like the idea of an LLC because you can always convert that to a nonprofit if you need to. And the kind of contributions we're going to be um, raising are not big amounts of money that people are really going to want to. But the thing, though, that you want to think about for opportunities are there might be really big donors who want to stay behind the scenes. And in that case, that, you know, big donors, we would just call them big Ds, might surface. And if we have them surface, then we could always rebrand or restructure the LLC as a, as a nonprofit. Yeah, I like, I, I, that's a good point. Um, so that's an action of there is creating an LLC, let's just call it that. Mm -hmm. um, a third one is to like start doing a search for a project manager. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's not the right time. Maybe you want to think of a cooler title than that. And maybe, you know, that might be just something you tweet out, or maybe we have somebody, I already know we have a couple people in mind for that, but that would be another action item would be finding, um, finding that right project leader who wants to take this on and really, really drive it. Yeah, I agree. Cause we definitely, we need somebody whose job it is. I mean, in a perfect world, you know, and I don't want to go too far afield back into visionary land. I mean, in a perfect world, we would have a project manager and we would have a, I'll call, I'll call them party event planner. I don't want to denigrate anybody's work. A lot of, so in a perfect world, we would have a PM and then we would have an event planner. And I think if we had those two positions filled, 
we could scale this thing into something huge. I think it would be massive if we had a if we had an event planner and a kind of a project manager who handled all that stuff. And then I could focus on what I'm good at, which is platforming, and you have a great attention to detail, but you could delegate a lot of the operational stuff to the event planner. I think that's a perfect well, yeah, way to have those. Yeah, exactly. Another next step is like where I, I'm not good at the, I'm not like super social. I'm not good at the meetups and the stuff. So the project manager is definitely going to be way better than I am at all the details. And I don't necessarily have time for that. But the one action item I'm going to add to this list that based on the feedback, um, I do think plays to my strengths, but I, I might look into a little bit more is building out, a, you know, the Magic Summit, mm -hmm. just starting to build a business plan for that, what that would look like. Because those things take time to, uh, to plan out. And I think that would be like the 80-20 rule if I just focus on one thing right. to help out with Magneto. Setting it in motion with you is one highly leveraged thing. And then I think this MAGA Summit, um, setting that in motion could also be a highly leveraged thing. So I'm going to like start noodling on that. Okay, cool. Um, and that's it. That's all I have. All right. Yep. Yeah, same thing. All right. So those of you following along at home, that was Jeff Giese. You can go to his website, J-E-F-F-G-I-E-S-E-A.com, Jeff Giese. You can also go to – you have a Twitter, right, at – Yeah. My, don't go to my website. It's kind of lame. Okay. So don't, yeah, don't even go there. Um, but you can follow me on Twitter at Jeff Giese. Um, and then you can follow me on Instagram, J-E-F-F-G-I-E-S-E-A. I'm not on Twitter on my personal account all that much. Um Okay. And again, it's, it's more like national security at the moment. But yeah, feel free to look me up and right. follow me there. And um, I love your community, Mike. So it's always great uh, connecting this way. Fun, right. fun experiment. Yeah, this was good. So well, we can do it. We can do a follow up. You know, it'd be kind of cool. If we could do a follow up with this, and then people could watch a project go from brainstorming and inception to conception. Or what is it? Concept? Which would it be? Which comes first, conception or yeah. inception? I don't know how, how, how to put that. One way or the other. Yeah, whatever. We, yeah. we get it. We, we get it. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Thanks for the call. All right. Thanks, Mike. I'll catch you later. Bye, okay. everyone. All right. So that was Jeff Giese. That you know, that's the way you do things. So a lot of people, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to go behind the curtain too much because I like people to think that I'm random and chaotic and crazy. It works to my advantage for people to to denigrate me and to think I'm just some lunatic on the internet. That is what I want people to think. I don't want people to know that I actually brainstorm all this stuff and I plan everything out and everything I do is orchestrated in ways that people don't even really understand. I, I would rather have people think, this guy is a lunatic, you can't trust him, kind of thing. But sometimes you got to show the cards. I just showed my cards. So what else is going on? If you like the idea, well, see, the thing is we don't just want a meetup.com page. We need people who are going to execute. We need people who are going to find a venue, set up a happy hour, know how to deal with what happens if the venue cancels, somebody trustworthy that people know that they can talk to. We have, you know, it isn't just setting up a meetup.com account. It's setting up a whole infrastructure. How are you doing, Shauna? Shauna, Shauna, now... Poor Shauna has to watch me on Periscope to even talk to her own her own husband anymore. She has to go on Periscope to even talk to him. Unbelievable. You know, you think it's all fun and games here. You think it's all fun and games here? Just the way it is. All right. If you like the idea, tweet uh, MAGA Meetups. M-A-G-A-E-T-T. -T. No, <laughs> I spelled that wrong. M-A-G-A, M-E-E-T, U-P-S, MAGA Meetups, MAGA meetups, and like Make America Great Again, like meetup, but plural. M-A-G-A-M-E-E-T-U-P-S. M-E-E-T-U-P-S, yeah, MAGA meetups. So post to the hashtag MAGA meetups, and then we will go from there. But I'm going to call this one, call this one quits. I might do another Periscope immediately after this one, I'm not sure. But if you want to know what we got planned, there's a MAGA meetup, there's our SWOT analysis, vision, mission statement, what we need, all the stuff going on. It's a great time. Thanks for tuning in. Mike Cernovich, DangerInPlay.com, Gorilla Mindset.